Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Spellbinder doing a report on today's news. This coming from the uh, Supreme Court ruling on the Obama anti-health care or the health care bill. And Scalela, one of the Supreme Court judges, says likens reading Obamacare to cruel and unusual punishment. Well, that's what you get when you allow somebody to write a bill that's 2,700 pages long, has about probably only a half of that, if not if even less of it, is actually about the health care. And the other parts of it have all types of goodies in there that were added into the bill. That's why it's 2,700 pages long, because they threw all types of, of, of uh, freebies in there for themselves and control freak things. And that's what they have done. This is this is what this is what he said. Right here. Severability. We don't Either need what happened to the Eighth Amendment? You really want us to go through these two thousand seven hundred pages? <laughs> One, and, and and do you really expect a court to do that, or do you expect us to to, to give this uh, function to our law clerks? Is, is this not totally unrealistic that we're going to go through this enormous bill item by item? And decide each one. Well, uh, see, well, yeah, I would say yes. We're going to go through this bill page by page, section by section, everything. You know why? Because we know in that 2,700 pages, there's there's a bunch of stuff in there that's anti-American and probably socialist and probably all types of other things that we don't know about. I've heard of some of them in there. I've heard they had all types of uh, controlling people and, you know, and, and goes with the NDAA type stuff or even the HR uh, 3, was it 347 or something? The one that they just pinced, actually it was executive order, but he just pencil whipped it in there and goes, there you go, there's another law. You know, I did hear something and I believe this is true. That actually the the uh, EOs executive orders actually do not function outside of Washington District of Criminals. That's right. Somewhere there's something that says that they can't use executive orders outside the Washington D.C. area. It's only for Washington D.C. because originally all it was was run the presidents. I can't remember offhand. It was there Jefferson or or uh, oh uh, one of the two. Andrew May, but his wife wanted money for housemaids. I think it was Washington on that one, and uh, or the president right after Washington, and she wanted money for the White House to keep it clean and hire some maids, and so the president pencil whipped off an executive order for the money and, and had the money brought in to pay for you know the servants and everything, and to keep the White House clean, and then later on another president's wife. Uh, I can't think of her. She wanted money for parties and stuff to, to wine and dine foreign delegates. And that president pencil whipped an executive order. But you notice these executive orders had nothing to do with with uh, arresting people off the street in America, Americans, and throwing them away for the rest of their lives. No, it had nothing to do with that. That's why I don't understand how they can get away with what they're doing. It's just unreal. Well, that's about all I have to say. I just wanted to bring up this article. This came from, I'll have this lo listed down there. This is called the Washington Free Beacon. And it's uh, the newspaper article I found it in. And I'll put this up and put the link to it. And you can see this for yourself and pass it around and say, Hey, these people are all, you know, it's just, I can't believe the judge is saying that they're not going to go through that bill. Because everybody knows there's criminal things in it. <laughs> And we gotta find them, so we can go back to Pelosi and said, "Yeah, we passed it, and we did look in it, and you're under arrest." Crazy Pelosi, man, I can't stand her. I look at her because I, I, I bet she did every drug possible in the '60s. Because she looks like she's totally out there. I mean, far out there somewhere. You look in her eyes, and it's like a, a mad woman or something. Oh well. Until next time, this is Paul Byers saying, "Be good, be good at it, and have a good day."